Well, hello there. So this is a bit of a long overdue video and it, it's a bit of an off the cuff one. I'll be honest. This wasn't well planned or choreographed and my chair's squeaking. That's not good. Um, so yeah, I, I, I thought I'd give you a tour of my setup because all you guys see when you watch a video of mine is this pretty blank, boring background or my grubby, dusty desk. So without further ado, let's get into the setup tour. So first and foremost, the centerpiece of any setup is of course the monitors. So you see this is a very, it's a bit of an interesting configuration. It's a, well, they, I think they call it the H configuration for, for obvious reasons. So in the center, I have a Dell Alienware 35 inch curved gaming monitor flanked by two 1440p 24 inch monitors. Now I really like this setup in that I can have one main thing that I'm working on in the middle and then it can be flanked by, I don't know, Spotify. If I'm expecting a, an email, I can have my mail open. Just various things, various windows that you tend to have open in the backgrounds that just would usually clutter up the desktop. I can just have them neatly on the side, which is great. One of the frustrating things about it though is that it's really easy for the cursor to just get lost in a corner somewhere. I, I just don't realize where it is and I spend a good 10 to 15 seconds just uh, vigorously shaking my mouse trying to figure out where it is but first world problems probably but still minor annoyance the computer itself i've taken the uh the front window off here is running a threadripper 2950x 64 gigs of quad channel ram and a gtx 1080 in there the fact that i've got all that ram and all those cores means uh, i can run vms for days i've had you know I, I can't remember i think at max i had like half a dozen VMs open? I can't remember, but, but it was a lot and it ran it just fine. I'm using a generic Netgear 8 port switch. And if we follow this black ethernet cable, I'll show you the router or router as you Americans like to call it. And here we are. This is also Netgear gear. It is a, I believe it's upside down actually, a Netgear Nighthawk router. It's a great router, it's real fast. However, for my main PC, I'll settle for nothing less than gigabit ethernet. For the keyboard, I'm using a Corsair RGB Strafe. It's a mechanical keyboard that doesn't have too many bells and whistles, apart from, of course, the, uh, the RGB. And I believe these are individually addressable keys, which is nice when it comes to the RGB. But for me, when it comes to peripherals, I just want peripherals that are ergonomic and work and just don't get in my way. I'm not too interested in all of the, uh, the extra features. For the mouse, I'm using a Razer Mamba Elite. Got two buttons on the side, DPI switch, it, oh God, and now, now it's broken. You can tell zero preparation went into this video, but this is meant, it's, it's meant to be off the cuff. Now over here, I have probably the most important thing in this room, which is my coffee mug, which has various curiously drawn cats on it. And it has a, a coaster to match. Mm. Delicious. Now you might be wondering what this is. It's not a grinder, I promise. It's actually a little 3D printed enclosure for micro SD cards that I've been using for the past two or three years now. I use them for testing Malduinos and uh, I only have three here. I used to have a lot more, but it turns out micro SD cards, if you use them a lot, they do actually end up just breaking either in half, or they just stop working eventually. But yeah, some of these SD cards have been used thousands of times just testing Malduinos. You can see on the back of this one, the gold on the PCB has just started to show and also a telescopic back scratcher. Now this is really handy. I mean, look, if, if work's ever getting difficult and you need some hand relief, you just extend this thing and there you have it. Just, 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 just rub. It's perfect. It's, it's very satisfying. Now you can tell this is a tinkerer's desk because I have a, an ESP module a completely destroyed and bastardized ESP module just lying around underneath my monitor. Just put it back there in case I need it later. And a, a random USB connector lying around. <laughs> now I have three of these microphone boom arms. They're hella useful. One is actually used to hold a microphone. Here I have my Rode NTG3. One of the other ones is used to hold the GH5 when I'm streaming or I need the camera you know, looking at me. Uh, and the other one, 
kind of doubles as a headphone stand, which is hella useful. Now the desks I'm using here are just two basic Ikea desks just mushed together. I think they were like 10 quid each, hella cheap. And it's in this island in the middle of the room. So I have my computer on one side and then on the other side, if I ever need to film something or I need to solder or, or just I need some kind of space to do something, I have the other side of the desk for that. Now under the desk, I have my Flash Forge Dreamer and a few other things, we'll look at those in a sec. But I just finished fixing this thing, finally, because it's been out of action for a while now. And I just finished printing this, uh, this little hat. I printed it for my snake, because if you guys didn't know, I do actually have a, have a snake. It's a little corn snake. Um, like, there he is, there he goes. Look at him go. If you follow me on Instagram, you get uh, exclusive pictures and videos of the snake eating food, doing various things. It's a funny little guy, and he escaped once. Um, I should probably go get him now, because he's gonna... He's gonna make his way... Oh god, no, please don't go inside the printer. That would be very bad. Come on, come on. Snake! Where are you going, you little shit? Come back! Come on, no, go, go. Oh, snake. Oh no, you can't. Oh, you cheeky. You can't do that. That's cheating. Oh, he's just wrapping himself around the, the, the table. That's... God, I should have thought this through. But anyway, there you have him. He's called Tangerine, so um, I should probably go put him back. Also under my desk, I have my generic Chinese hot air station. So this is a soldering station. Uh, if I need to solder surface mount components, this thing does the job. It's a very generic soldering station. It's sold under many different brands. So if you just look up 852D+, you will find it. And it's actually quite good if you're just doing um, a couple layered PCBs. Of course, I have a fire extinguisher to hand because I um, can't be too sure with these things. Now, I did forget to mention that atop the desk, much to many of your guys' chagrin, I am sure, I have a MacBook Air. Now, this is a laptop I use when traveling. Feel free to leave as many Apple hate comments below this video as you like. Other than the keyboard, which is probably a, a 6 out of 10, the rest is pretty good. The trackpad is great, the display is awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about this because um, I'm losing subscribers as I speak. I can, I can hear you guys just unsubbing, so let's put this away. Although, I do like the skin I gave it. Now this isn't a skin, but it is in fact many individual Maltronic stickers all st just, just stuck on. But some of them are peeling off, I should probably redo this at some point. In order to light the room up, I'm using two of these studio light-esque looking things. In reality, there's nothing studio lighting about them, they're just using standard bayonet light bulbs. Though they are smart bulbs, so I can control them with my phone. God, you realise when filming something like this how dusty everything is. Now to the left of my desk here, I have many a storage unit. Now I'm sure there's a lot of basic things in there that really aren't that interesting, though I'm gonna see if I can pluck a few things out and do a bit of a bit of a quick fire round. Well, I'm really finding a lot of random things from videos I did years ago. Like, does anybody remember this? This is a trip down memory lane. <laughs> I'll link a video up here if you if you want to watch that. This is good fun. I'm also finding a lot of uh, recent projects. This one was good. Oh, oh, now it's broken. Now in these boxes, for example, we have a bunch of Raspberry Pis. I think there's three here. There's no such thing as too many pies. Now this is what I like to call a Malduino mass grave. It's just a bunch of Malduinos that never ended up working for one reason or another. They all have their own various personal issues, but enough of those. This is a good one. Misc. What's in miscellaneous? Ah yes, I've never used this. I believe this is a Ham It Up V1.3, I want to say. Um, <laughs> I believe I traded this for a few Malduinos way back in the day. However, I never got around to using it. And I, I honestly don't know what I use it for. I haven't, I haven't looked into this at all. But if you guys want to see me do something with this, uh, let me know, get me some ideas down in those comments. I've got a whole bag of these little guys. Now back in the day, I say, I'm saying back in the day a lot today. Um, Back in the day, I used to be really into these modules. The little Arduino 433 megahertz um, RF transmitter and receiver, I believe. They're incredibly cheap, incredibly cheap. You can get a pair of these on eBay for 
oh, 50 cents, less than a dollar. They're incredibly slow and unreliable, <laughs> but for my A-level computing project, they worked a treat. Ah, now this little bag here might be interesting to some people. You see, when you buy microcontrollers, this is how they come. Now, these are Cortex-M0 chips for a project I'm working on. This is how microcontrollers come packed when you buy them online. Uh, they come in this little plastic anti-static case. <laughs> now, it says very clearly on the front, a vacuum pen must be used when removing this device. Unfortunately, I do not know what a vacuum pen is, nor do I have one. And there's nothing in... Did I get... What? What? Ah, there we go. They just chucked them in in the bottom there. Nice. So I'll be using these for an upcoming project. What project? Well, I guess you just have to wait and see. So I think that's where I'm going to leave things, guys. If there's anything you want to have a second look at, let me know down in those comments. There's a bunch of stuff I missed out just because it, it would be here for hours if I went through every single implement in this room. So maybe in the future when I'm, again, short on time for a video, um, I'll, I'll put another one out. But I hope you found this quick zip around my office somewhat intriguing. So as always, thanks for watching. Remember to like the video if you liked it and subscribe, that's important. And as always, stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.